There's probably a spider watching you right now. The question is, is it one you want to have around, or is it something sinister? Our houses are more than just homes, they're habitats. And when you take a warm, dry place with access to food and stick it in the environment, there are lots of critters that will find their way in. Spiders, like black widows and brown recluses, which can have dangerous bites even to humans, are among these critters. But what if I told you that there was a terrifying looking spider that you did want in your house? A spider with probably the most frightening hunting strategy of them all, but one that will keep all the nastiest ones at bay. Let me introduce you to the tiger spider. And to do that, we're heading to its native habitat of Chile. Have a look at this spider right here. This is one of the coolest spiders we could have possibly found. The Chilean tiger spider. Now if I take it out here, you can actually get a look why gets that name that oh those creepy long legs covered in banding these are one of the top arachnid predators of the night and you can even see it in those markings these guys truly are the tigers of the spider world because guess what they're hunting they're hunting one of the most venomous spiders not just in all of chile but in the entire world this spider right here hunts the chilean recluse spider these spiders aren't just in Chile. The tiger spider has been introduced to metropolitan areas all over the world, and it has a lot of close cousins that are hunting deadly spiders too. The Chilean tiger spider belongs to the family Cytotidae, and they're all spider hunters. They've found an ingenious way to combat the toxic power of some of the world's most venomous spiders, and have turned the hunters into the hunted. So in many ways, this might be a spider you'd like to have around. In their natural habitat, these spiders are sticking to crevices, tight enclosed spaces where they can stay dry. They're living in the bark of trees, cracks in rocks or fallen logs, tight forgotten corners of the habitat where they can fold up and wait in the shadows for night to fall. But tiger spiders aren't unique in this desire to tuck themselves away during the day. In fact, there are a lot of other spiders that would be found in the exact same habitats where these tiger spiders are waiting out the daylight. Things like widows, Loose spiders, dangerously venomous species that most people definitely don't want around their houses. And the craziest thing is the tiger spider actually likes that these dangerous spiders are lurking around because the Chilean tiger spider's favorite food is actually these recluse spiders. In their native range, the Chilean recluse is not only extremely venomous, but it's actually one of the most venomous spiders in the world. It's pretty much everything that the brown recluse in the US is made out to be, if not more. Where it's hard to find confirmed deaths to the brown recluse, we actually do have quite a few confirmed human deaths to the Chilean recluse. In fact, the Chilean recluse has the third most human deaths of any spider in the world. But if the Chilean recluse is so venomous, how is it that this Chilean tiger spider is able to effectively hunt spiders that are more toxic than they are? The tiger spider is one of the spitting spiders, which are also known recluse predators throughout their range. But it's crazy because you look at them, they actually look a lot like the brown recluse. They have six eyes right in the front of their face, three groups of two, just like the brown recluses, and they are these kind of spindly flat spiders that are living in crevices and stuff during the day, so they are gonna be hiding in the same habitats. The biggest difference though is look at them from the side, where recluse will actually have a fully flat cephalothorax right in the front. These guys have that weird hump and it almost makes them look a little bit silly. It looks kind of like you put two like globs of glue together and just painted it with some patterning, put some little poppy seeds in the front and called it a spider. But that shape is actually a clue to their incredible biology. The reason I love spitting spiders so much is they have one of the most unique hunting strategies of not just any arachnid, but any arthropod. The only thing similar to the way they hunt are velvet worms, which are super, super, super distant cousins of things like insects and spiders. These guys are the real life Spider-Man. They can shoot webs at the things they're trying to catch. How insane is that? We all know Spider-Man. Whether you watch the Marvel movies or read comic books as a kid, he's like one of the most famous superheroes. Now, I don't know if Stan Lee knew about spitting spiders when he was concepting the amazing Spider-Man, but most spiders don't actually shoot webs like this. For most spiders, their web is their shelter. They use this silk to build a retreat where they can hide from the elements. Many spiders like tarantulas and funnel webs use their web as their home. 
More famously, things like orb weavers, which are arguably one of the most recognizable spiders, use their webs to hunt, but not actively like the spitting spider does. They build these intricate geometric webs spanning across fly-through zones, and the web acts more as a net to catch flying insects that are passing through. The web-building spiders even use their webs as an extension of their mind. The tension in every strand is fine-tuned to pick up vibrations in their environment, not just from prey hitting their web, but sounds. Spiders don't hear the same way that we do. They hear through vibrations that they feel, and these webs amplify the vibrations in the environment so they can hear every precise detail. Some spiders are even known to change the density of their capture spirals in response to the sizes of flying insects in their environment. So it's possible they're making these web building decisions based on the vibrations they're hearing in their environment. Some spiders, like the bromeliad spiders of Central and South America, even use their webs to communicate. During mating season, females will leave a trail of pheromone-lined web as they wander around the rainforest floor. When males find these webs, they pluck them in species-specific rhythms that the female will then respond to. They're literally playing telephone over expanses of the ground of tropical rainforests, and the males are able to use these vibrations to find mates in one of the most complex habitats on Earth. But even with all of that, the spitting spider is using its web in perhaps the most unique way. Like many other spiders, the spitting spider does build a shelter web during the day. They'll also hang out in these wispy webs at night, usually out in the open while they hunt. But the spitting spider isn't restricted to its silken retreat. They will actively wander into the environment, their ghostly legs slowly creeping in the moonlight. And they're ambitious hunters. They love eating other spiders. Wolf spiders, jumping spiders, recluse spiders. Spiders that are faster, smarter, and even more venomous than they are. The spitting spider is almost completely useless in direct combat with these arachnids, but it has a secret weapon. Like Spider-Man, the spitting spider has a ranged weapon, able to shoot silk from a distance repeatedly, immobilizing prey that would otherwise be impossible to take down. Despite the physical advantages that other spiders have over them, the spitting spider wins because it's effectively bringing a gun to a knife fight. And it gets cooler than that even. The reason that their head is so humped like that is for most spiders, they store their venom glands in their cephalothorax. These guys actually have venom and silk glands in their head, and they mix, coming out through those fangs, and they use their fangs like squirt guns to shoot this venom-laced web mixture at their targets. So it's not just sticking to their prey and immobilizing them physically, it's also absorbing into them and helping to paralyze them before the spider comes and delivers the killing bite. They are absolutely metal hunters. This web weapon is actually different from the silk that the spitting spider uses to build its cover web. It's almost more like a glue, and it's produced deep in these massive hybrid glands they have in their cephalothorax. The spider's venom is produced in these same exact glands, and there is research that suggests they're able to incorporate this venom into those glue projectiles to help immobilize their prey. In the blink of an eye, the spitting spider basically shoots a zigzag pattern of this crazy adhesive silk at its targets, and these spiders will repeatedly do it until the prey stops moving. While we don't know a ton about their venom, we were able to see that it has a few components similar to the saliva of a tick. Components that kind of break down certain proteins and act as a mild cytotoxin. It's possible that these proteins are able to sort of help break down components in their target's exoskeleton to give the venom an easier point of absorption. Like most other spiders, their venom has neurotoxic components that help immobilize their prey. And while these components likely aren't in large concentrations in their glue, it could help sort of create a numbing or calming effect on their prey. Since they're hunting larger arthropods, some of which are even more venomous than they are, this glue-like web not only physically restrains them, but it almost drugs them, makes them weak, makes them passive, so that the much less athletic, much less toxic spitting spider can safely climb on top of them to deliver a killing bite. Now you can see here, they're not super fast spiders. It's actually a very slow and calculated animal. And it's part of the reason why they have that uncanny ability. The spiders they're hunting are considerably more venomous than they are. I'm not even sure if this can bite people. But across their range, they're hunting things that are smarter than them, like jumping spiders, and sometimes even more venomous than them, like recluses and widows. So they kind of are outmatched in every single way. So they make up for it 
with their incredible ranged attacks. This spider has found a way to survive by hunting other spiders, and that makes it one heck of a cool creature. And so if you don't like spiders, do some research. See if you have spitting spiders around your house or in your backyard and learn how to identify them because they might just be your new favorite spider because they're gonna be eating all of the other spiders that you definitely don't like. That is a super cool one. I love how cool they look backlit like this. The spitting spider, the Chilean tiger here in Northern Chile. We're gonna let him go back into the environment because we're gonna be looking for considerably scarier spiders than even this one. A lot of people prefer that spiders don't live in their houses, but hopefully, after seeing the incredible abilities of the spitting spider, you might consider making an exception. They may have a menacing appearance, but they're friendly neighborhood watchdogs, keeping the real supervillains at bay. And spitting spiders might be the only arachnids to use this unusual ability, but they do have a counterpart living in humid, tropical environments around the world an ancient creature distantly related to arthropods, the mysterious Velvet Worm. Shooting glue isn't even the weirdest thing about these odd creatures, so if you want to learn more about them, check out this video right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.